This is section 9.4 for pre-calculus, and we're going to introduce proof by mathematical induction. I want you to do a couple warm-ups first. Try to do this first one as much as possible, and read it, and then figure out uh, what's going on here. And then also do the second one. The second one is using the regression techniques that we learned in class last time. You might have to go pretty deep for this one, though. So go ahead and do that, and then pause, and sort that out. So if we take a pill and it has 100 milligrams of whatever drug that we need in it, if it dissipates, the first hour is going to be 80 of what it, uh, grams, what it, milligrams what it was before, and second hour 64 milligrams, and then so on. It's going to keep on dissipating. So at some point we need to take a pill. So we could say, oh, here 51.2. If we take a 100 uh, milligram tablet, we'll still be in the safe zone. So every three hours, we can take one. But if you look at what happens over the course of time, if we take one every three hours, then all of a sudden we're going to run into trouble. So take out your calculator and see if you can put this into your calculator under the sequence mode and work this out. If you have a sub n, 0.8 to the third, that's what's happening here. I'm multiplied by 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times the previous term, and then we take another pill. If you do it for four hours, you get this one here. And then you can use your calculator to sort some of this out. So if you look at your calculator here, you can go to the sequence mode again, and then type these things in. We can type in two equations. This is the previous term times 0.8 to the third. We're multiplying by 0.8 by um, three times. And then for the second equation, we got the previous term multiplied by 0.8 raised to the fourth. So we're going to wait four hours before we keep on taking the pills. Then we're going to add in 100 milligrams uh, every four hours or every three hours in that case. And if you look at your table, once you set this up, you look at if we take it for three hours, look at how we are dealing with our safety level. We are beyond our safety level and we're approaching looks like 205 or something like that uh, for taking a pill every three hours. 204.92 and you can even jump over on top of this to get something more accurate. And then if you look at the taking the pill every four hours, this really seems to taper off 169. So this is some of the ideas behind some of these recursive formulas and what people have to look at and doctors especially. So if we look at finishing up this problem, you taper off if you don't take any more pills, but then if you do take pills, you can figure out what the level will be maintaining at over the course of time. Now some of you might think that, oh, take a 100 milligram pill, that would keep on going up and up and up, but actually when it dissipates and you take a pill, it will level off. So this one, the judgment I would say would be four hours. You also have to make instructions easy for patients, other considerations, but mathematically, that's what we're talking about there. Now, if you go ahead and find a rule for this pattern, pause this now and make sure that you go and try this. If you do find this, this is a fourth level. Fourth level on your calculator will be a quartic generator. So go ahead and try that and give yourself some good practice. Uh, we'll do a quiz on this later. But if you do this, you get a sub n is equal to n to the fourth minus 4n cubed plus 5n squared minus 2n minus 5. Okay, so uh, I don't know what this formula is doing here. i got to get rid of that. But that's wrong. Okay, so fourth row difference is all the same, so we use a quartic generator. Now we're going to get into mathematical induction. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to prove uh, that formulas work. And these, a lot of times these are sequence formulas, but what we want to do is, first of all, show that it works for one value. So we're going to plug in one value or some number and show that it works. If the formula doesn't work for that one value, then why are we even using it? So we can discard it straight away. But then one method of proof is mathematical induction. So we want to show that this thing works for the n plus 1 case. And we want to do it for both sides of the equation. And you can use k plus 1 as the book does, but n plus 1 is easier. Uh, we actually should be using k plus 1, so when you go through your notes, maybe try to do this. 
I could write all this stuff out step by step, but I think the best way is to just already see the notes printed out and then you follow along and put this on your own notes. Okay, so first step. We want to show by mathematical induction, we want to prove this formula. And so this is a sum formula. If we add up all the odd integers up to 2n minus 1, we're going to get n squared. So to prove this, first of all, take n equal to 1. You could take n equal to 5 or n equal to anything else. But we'll take n equal to 1 and show that this works. So on the left side, s sub 1 is equal to my first term. That's 1. Is that the same thing as plugging it in here? Yes, it is. So this one comes from just this first term. This one comes from over here. Are they true? Yes. And so then the next step, step number two, is show that this works for the n plus 1 case. So we must show that s sub n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 quantity squared. So we go to the left side, s sub n plus 1. And really, this is the left side. And we're going to take the odd integers all the way up to here. And then we're going to add n plus 1 term. So we're going to take n plus 1 and plug it in wherever we see this n. So we get 2 times the quantity n plus 1 minus 1. Pause now if this is going too fast. So on the left-hand side, we have this sum with one more term added in. We want to show that the sum then on this side will be equal to this whole sum. And so I'm going to take and call this one n plus 1 squared later on. Now to simplify this, I take this whole red thing and I know from previous that this is equal to s sub n. And then the s sub n is going to be in addition 2n plus 1. I simplified this and I get this. What do we know, and you always have to use this previous information, what do we know s sub n as? We know it as n squared from here. So you take this previous information and substitute it in. Put on your additional amount, which is the 2n plus 1. And if we factor this down, sure enough, we get n plus 1 quantity squared. That would be the same thing as taking this n and replacing it with n plus 1. And since the first term satisfies the formula, and s sub n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 quantity squared, s sub n is true for all n greater than 1. So we just proved this. So you might want to pause and go back and look at that. Then if we go on to the next one, this one's similar in nature. You have this left-hand side. You want to add one more term in. And then over here, wherever I see an n, I want to replace it with an n plus 1. So let's see how that works for the part 2 of the proof. But let's start off again how we need to start off. Step number 1. Plug in a value, make sure it works. So s sub 1, 1 squared, that's the first term. Does that equal what happens when I plug this into the formula? Sure enough, 6 over 6 is equal to 1. So that's what you want to show. Pause now if you need. Then part 2 says we must show that s sub n plus 1 is equal to, I'm taking n and replacing with n plus 1. n plus 1 with n plus 2, 2n plus 1 with 2n plus 3. That whole thing divided by 6. That's what we must show. So I'm going to take the left side and I'm going to extend it by 1. And then with this, in the blue again, this blue is equivalent to what I started off with. So I do a substitution here and I just put this in. Then this additional amount I need to work this out and do a little algebra and see what happens when I put in the additional term. So I get a common denominator. Put it over 6, and I might need to expand this out. Oh, but if you use advanced factoring techniques, this will work out much better. You see n plus 1 here, and you see n plus 1 here. Both of those are in common. So I'm going to take those out, and then I'm going to see what's left. Well, on this side, it's n and 2n plus 1, those are left. On this side, it's the 6 and the n plus 1, one of them, are left for here. And then I have everything divided by 6. So I factored out the n plus 1. And why I knew I had to do that, because I knew I had an n plus 1 here and I had an n plus 1 here, really, because I had n plus 1 here. 
Then I'm left with a quadratic, and if I factor that down, sure enough, I end up with this. So you should make a summary statement that since S sub N plus one is equal to this, therefore we have proved by mathematical induction that this formula does work. Uh, the C is a little bit trickier, but we can go with it and make it happen. Step number one, and you can pause and try this a little bit if you want, but we take and we put n equal to one in. And we put n equal to one, we get three. Is three a factor, has it have a factor of three? Sure enough, it does. So step one works, this formula works. Now we must show for each successive one. So we must show that n plus one quantity cubed minus n plus one plus three has a factor of three. So all I did was take this left-hand side, bump it up by one for each of the n's, and then say, does it have a factor of three? Somehow, when I expand, I want to get this original piece out because I know that this has a factor of three. So let's expand this and see what happens. So in an expansion, n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n mi uh, plus 1 minus n minus 1 plus 3. So now I want to try to replicate this thing that I had up here at the beginning. Well, here's the n cubed. That works. I put some other terms together. Oh, here's a negative n. Oh, here's a 3. I actually didn't even have to put things together. What's left over, the 3n squared and the 3n. So I pulled this original out, because I know this one in the red does have a factor of three. Now I just gotta show this part has a factor of three as well. So if I do that, this has a factor of three, this has a three in common. If both of these have a factor of three, then the sum total will also have a factor of three. It's like three uh, x plus nine. Yes, both have a factor of three, I can factor it out. And so this has a factor of three, this has a factor of three, and I summarize, since both terms have a factor of three, overall we have a factor of three as well. Okay, let me show you a quick YouTube video here. Okay, we get the idea there. What happens with mathematical induction and the relationship to these PCs is that what we're doing is that we're showing that essentially this, work, this formula works for one term, like the first domino. And then if we can show that the formula works for each domino in succession, then I know it works for the first term, so it must work for the second term. If it works for the second term, then it must work for the third term. And so each successive term, it will work for. And so you can prove this out to infinity and show that this does happen. There's been many cases uh, where, uh, in the history of mathematics, where some people have uh, put forth a theorem and shown that it's worked for three or four terms, and then the numbers get too huge, and they weren't able to calculate. With computers nowadays, yeah, they can calculate. So sometimes these were proven false. If they would have used mathematical induction to prove it, though, they would have been able to sort that out. So that's why we're doing mathematical induction. When you come to class, then we'll do the homework, but try to review this and have completed notes. Thanks.